warriors, drengers, jarls, lend us your spears. Welcome to the Brothers Gwyn channel today. If you've not already noticed, it's a bit of a different video. We're dressed up, we're ready to talk about the shadow of the gods. Today we'll be talking about the glossary. So going through what all the terms mean and trying to just have a video where you can get everything in one place. Yeah, absolutely guys. Now, we're, we might look it, but we're not exactly Old Norse specialists. Unfortunately, we don't speak the languages, but we're gonna give it our best shot. You know, we've done a little bit of research. We've read quite a few books. We are Viking reenactors. We'd like to say we know a little bit, um, Tiny but bit. I think we, as long as we can give someone a ballpark region of how you may pronounce some things, uh, what they mean as well, this would be a good guide um, for people to see uh, and also hear some of the keywords, some of the names, that kind of stuff um, from The Shadow of the Gods by Papa John Gwynn. Um, so we will be using Will's mobile because this has the glossary on. And now <laughs> Not this quite is, authentic. We don't want but... this to get confused. People didn't have mobiles back then, if you didn't know. Um, but yeah, so we will be using that because we can't memorise everything, unfortunately. Um, so let's go straight on to it then, William. So the first term, akal. Yeah, and akal uh, is like an invocation. It's bringing, uh, it's, it's a bit like a incantation where you're reliving the last moments of someone's life. And the second term is an old thing. So this is a meeting. This is a meeting of free people of a certain region or territory mm -hmm. where they would meet up with di all people of different stations, yarls, farmers, yeah, a whole men, mix, the herd. and they would discuss a problem or problems depending on what is going on at that time. Yeah, they would usually meet at a wide open space such as a you know something that means a lot to them as well that is quite neutral such as a rune stone, quite uh, something like that, yeah, so that is an old thing. And the next term that we have is a berserker. Yeah. So this is a person who in the shadow of the gods is a descendant of Bursa, who is one of the dead gods. And they are very strong and capable of savagery. And they um, own the abilities of bears, basically. Yeah, Bursa is the bear god. Now in Old Norse, berserker is a warrior who goes mad with battle lust. Um, so if you've read any Bernard Cornwell or Robert Lowe, you might hear a lot about the berserkers. Um, people who were widely feared warriors uh, that were terrifying to just the average soldier or the average warrior or the farmer. And now the next term is a Blothsvarith. Did the, I say that right? Yes, the Blothsvarith. Now there are some Old Norse uh, letters, very specific letters in the Shadow of the Gods and they will be popping up on the screen as we are reading them. Now the Blothsvarith, you pronounce that the curly D with a TH sound. Um, but it's like the V in then, so blov sat variv. Um, so yeah, it's, it, we sometimes get confused as well, don't we? But similar to the the uh, the vigriv, um, it has that funny D at the end, which is actually a th sound. So a blov svarif uh, is a, um, blood it's a it's a blood oath. Yeah, very similar to uh, in Harry Potter when they make the unbreakable vow, the unbreakable, don't they? yeah, something exactly. like that. And the next term is a brinja. So a brinja mm -hmm. is a coat of mail. Yeah, this is a brinja, um, and it is comes from the Scottish, I think it's Gaelic, a uh, burnie. Um, so that yeah, a brinja is uh, a coat of ring mail, not chain mail because it's not made in chain. It's made in uh, links and riveted together. And obviously, the, this is used for protection. And Papa Gwyn talks about a lot of the warriors of the Bloodsworn yeah. and in Vigris wearing a brinja. The camera angle might have changed and when I say might it definitely has because the wind has blown the phone over so uh, yeah that's why. They um, are the obstacles of nature. Absolutely when you work outside <laughs> never work with animals uh, or outside in the weather or with um, children <laughs> or anyone but yourself mm -hmm. uh, but now we'll carry on with the glossary. The next term is a birding. Yep a birding is basically a similar very similar to a skiff uh, it's like a fisherman's boat a coastal boat. And now the next one is a drakkar, which is another type of boat, Ed. Yeah, a drakkar is the famous longship um, for the Old Norse. Now it's, uh, it's it, drakkar means dragon, so it's like a dragon ship. Um, and awesome. with the dragon head at the prow, um, with the prow beasts, uh, yeah, the, so the, the carvings at the front of the drakkar uh, would be able to be removed when uh, Vikings, you know, the Old Norse people, um, would be able to, would be landing and going inland uh, via rivers. But yeah, a drakkar can house up to sometimes even up to 80 warriors um, with about 60 oars as well. So very, very large. 
And the next term is a Drenga, which we actually included in our introduction of this video. We did. And a Drenga is an oath sworn warrior. They're trained to a very high level. This is most of their life. They train every day, all day, and they will have very high level weapons and gear. So they may be dressed as lavishly as Ed is right now. Well, maybe, maybe. And now the next term is a Druze Hinner. Mm. So, so a Druze Hinner is actually going to what William's outfit. So mine would be a Drenga, uh, and the Druze Hinner is more of the Eastern Rus, who were the, the Swedes who went into what is now Russia and the Byzantine Empire, that kind of area. Yeah. So um, more of an Eastern style. The Druze Hinner would be uh, typically elite mounted warriors yeah. and they would also be wear wearing lamella mm -hmm. armor lamella as well plate. which you may see at a different point in this video or this will be a series of videos so you may see it in one of the others as well and the next term is the galda brock uh, now galda is a term for magic and this is usually associated with males um, and magic that people uh, in the old norse eras were actually a bit more keen on so a bit more helpful as opposed to Sather, which we will talk about later, which is kind of low down, dishonest magic. And they usually associated it with females. Whereas in the shadow of the gods, um, Sather is just a different type of magic. Um, and the Galdar is a bit more high class, uh, where people go to Galdar towers and they would train. Um, yeah. And carrying on with that, we have the Gulda man, which as you may be able to guess from that, this is basically a magic man, yeah. a magician who specifically uh, they train in rune magic, and that is the type of magic that Papa Gwyn explores in The Shadow of the Gods. Yeah, sorry, Galda Brock is actually a Galda book, so that's what I was getting onto. Uh, it's, a, it's a man who does Galda magic, uh, and it's a book with magic spells and incantations within. And the next term is the Grau Skinner. And so this is Grey Skin, so it's another book of magic, uh, but it directly translates as Grey Skin. Yeah. And now on to the next term, which is the Guth. Fala, which is the gods fall. So in Shadow of the Gods, mm -hmm. part of the premise and the context of the world is that the gods had a huge battle, somewhat like Norse mythology, Ragnarok within that, and the gods have died. And the battle and the conflict was labelled as the Guth Fala. And the next term is the Guth Lios, uh, and this is the nor basically the Northern Lights. It means I think it means God Lights. Um, in Icelandic. Uh, lo there is lots of Icelandic in the Shadow of the Gods. But yeah, it's basically like the Northern Lights. And now the next one is the Hangorok. Did I say that correctly? You did, yeah. The Hangorok is a female uh, type of wear. Um, usually, type of dress. Yeah, type of dress. And it's basically like an, a an apron with two large bronze um, brooches on either side. And the next term that we have is a herd, which is warriors belonging to a Yol's household. So we'll later get on to what a yol is, but basically these would be the elite warriors, the yeah. ones who are hired permanently. Similar to, to Drengas. Similar to Drengas. They're yeah. hired, um, yeah, but they're specifically for a household. They're like a bodyguard. Yeah. Uh, and now the next term, which is a heya, which is means- Heya is basically, it's a term of people just saying, yeah, I agree with that. You know, yeah, they cool. say heya or hrum. So it means um, agreed. Yeah, exactly. And the next term we have, which you may have encountered quite a few times in the Shadow of the Gods, is a Hornganga. So this is a type of duel which is recognised by law and is used to settle disputes. Mm -hmm. You can do it either to first blood or to death. Or possibly to, um, sometimes they would have three shields uh, and if your three shields were broken uh, during the combat, the single du um, duel, uh, then you would be finished. And basically you would have lost the, the bout, um, so therefore you are incorrect in the god's eyes as well as the free people's eyes. And if you agree to this, then you can be killed within the eyes of the law. You can disagree, but this may be an act of dishonour. So, home gang is very serious business. Yeah, you don't want to be in one. <laughs> what they would do is they would have uh, hazel rods twined together, weaved together uh, in a circle, and many other people would stand in a circle. If you've read the first law, there is a duel at the end, which is very similar to a home gang. Um, so, yes, and I'm sure, obviously, if you read Shadow of the Gods, uh, you will have seen some of Hongangas too. And the next term is, as we earlier mentioned, a Jarl. So a Jarl is like a Lord or an L. It's just a different title and it's someone who's high ranking there in charge of a territory around them. And there'll be quite a few Jarls. So they're not as high ranking as a king, but they may serve a king. Yeah, it's the Old Norse for Lord basically. And in Old Norse, when you see the J uh, in the English alphabet, um, it's actually pronounced with a Y or a Y. Okay, um, such as yoke, so a jarl or a fjord, 
um, that kind of thing. So it's with the uh, Y pronunciation. And the next term is a knar. I can't roll my R's. A knar. There we go. I can't roll my R's. Yeah, it's terrible. And a knar, uh, usually called <laughs> fat bellies knars, uh, and they are uh, merchant ships. Um, so they, they wouldn't have many, many oars or space for, for warriors. They would be uh, round bellied, pot bellied little things um, <laughs> suitable for carrying cargo across the seas. Uh, and the next term is the Mather boy. So this is basically just a human child. Yeah, that's that's it really. Uh, and now on to the next one, which is a knifing. Yeah, a knifing. Uh, Ed says this to me all the time. <laughs> knifing is a nasty insult. Basically means you are nothing. You are a person of no morals, no honour, no respect. Yeah, someone of no importance at all. Mm. Again, the camera angle may have changed. We are fighting against the elements right now. Yeah, the wind but, is beating us. But the next term is a narrow binding. So mm -hmm. this is to bind or to weave, as you may be able to tell from the term. So this was basically an early form of knitting. Yeah, for example, and this, this what I'm wearing under my uh, helmet is a null binding cap. Um, now, there wasn't too much evidence for the fact that Old Norse people wore um, null binding for their hats. They did have null binding for um, their mittens and socks as well. So it's not it's not exactly a far um, expectation or belief that they wore this for hats as well. And the next one we have is a Roth Skinner. <laughs> I don't know how I yeah, just said that. Then. Skinner. Roth I see I'm Rothgar, terrible with accents. Rothgar. And this means redskin. So this is another book of magic. Mm -hmm. And in the Shadow of the Gods, this is a book that is made from the flayed skin of a god. So very tasty business. Yeah, absolutely. So, yes, yeah, so there's a couple books of magic, like the uh, the grey skin that we yeah. read about earlier. And next we have a sayak. So this is a single edged knife. Uh, do you want to say a bit more about the sayak? Yeah, there's a few different types of sayaks, sometimes pronounced as sacks. Um, people think that's where the Saxons got their name from because they had these work knives. And they're basically anything from a knife to a battle knife, so a longer knife. Usually they're broken backed. Uh, I will have some pictures coming up as well. We do have some, um, but we don't have any on us right now. Um, but yeah, a sayax or a sax is very popular in the Old Norse terms. You can use it uh, in a shield wall, also for many, many other things like breaking up kindling, uh, cutting uh, your nose hairs or your hair or anything. Not that I've been from experience. And the next term we have is something that we actually mentioned earlier, and this is a sather. Sather. There we go. I just need yeah. Ed to just a roll the R's. Witch, uh, roll and a sather is a type of magic. Um, like I said earlier, usually associated with the women uh, of Old Norse culture. Um, and yeah. And then the next time we have a sather witch. Yes. So a, a, a woman who practices this type of magic. Yeah, a bit of a reference to Shadow of the Gods as well. There's, uh, there's some Easter eggs there. There yeah. are two sather witches uh, in Shadow of the Gods, and one of them is called Vol, Vol, and the other is called Uspa. And if you put those two words together, they make the Voluspa, Voluspa. which is a uh, Old Norse text. So a little Easter egg from Papa Gwyn there, some of his research. And the next term we have is a skald. So a skald is, if you've read The Witcher, Gat Dandelion, similar to him, is basically a bard, someone employed for poetry, epic poems, um, reading off verses, singing, that kind of thing in halls. And next we have a skull. Skull? Yes, yeah, skull. Um, and you know, if you watch Vikings and you know skull is something <laughs> they say when it basically means cheers. Okay. Good health. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about the authenticity of that, but it sounds pretty cool. <laughs> and the next one we have is now a snekia. Yeah, yeah snekia. Um, a snekia is another type of boat. It's uh, a long ship. It's not quite as big as a draka. Um, now we found, not me personally, but us as a human race have found <laughs> through archaeology many different type of snekia and drakas uh, buried in bays and keys and harbours around Scandinavia. Uh, people used to um, sink their own ships uh, to stop other people from um, coming inland and taking over their town, destroying them. If they're under attack, when they're being sieged or blockaded, they would sort of sink their own ships to form their own kind of blockade so the ships couldn't land. Thanks, Ed. Uh, yeah. Now the next term is Taffel. So this is a strategy game yeah. which is basically like an earlier form of chess. Yeah, it is. Um, and it, it, you have two sides and you have, in black, you have one uh, player will have their pieces, their soldiers on the outside of the board and someone else will have theirs on the inside with a king. And it is about... A yarl, they have their Jarl and their bodyguard in the middle and it's all about you getting your Jarl to the edge of the board. So if you get your Jarl to the edge of the board, similar like a pawn in chess, if they get to the opposite end of the board, then they become a queen, don't they? Or heirs it anything? I think it's any um, yeah. anyone you want, any piece. Uh, so if a Jarl gets to the edge of the board, he's escaped. Um, but all of the other soldiers, all of the um, yeah, they're on the outside trying to trap him and then take him. 
It's a really good game. Hopefully we'll do a video of us playing it. So Hopefully, yeah. Fun. And if you want to see a game of Tafel now, I'm sure you can just look up Tafel. Yeah, and and it's, it comes from come the word Geneva Tafel, um, which I'll put the spelling up on the screen. And now the next one is a thrall, so this means a slave, yeah. and in you reference to them. you do not, in reference to the shadow of the gods, Varg starts as a thrall. Mm -hmm. So a slave, they have no rights, they serve their master. And if you think of the old Norse language seeping into English as well, um, thrall it has then turned into enthrall, so when you enthrall someone uh, in chains or you know, trap them. That is pretty cool. Um, and now on to the next one, which is the Old Fedna. So earlier we talked about the Berserkir, which Papa Gwyn has um, turned into meaning the descendant of Bursa. Mm -hmm. The Old Fedna are descendants of Ulfri, who yep. is the wolf god. And these are capable of great stamina, speed, and again, ferocity. A lot of these gods were very nasty people. Yeah. Well, gods, not people. <laughs> but um, yeah, so the Old Fedna are not to be messed with. Yeah, and you know, they're tainted as well, similar to the um, Berserkirs, and they are the Wolf Warriors. And now on to the next term, which is Vesen. Uh, Vesen. Vesen. Um, and there is a book uh, called Vesen by Johan Egerkrans, who has done the Swedish art for Order of the Rings, I believe. Um, yeah, but yeah, does. so Vesen is uh, a creature, uh, and in um, the... It's, it's a type of creature, it's an umbrella term, really, for many different types of creatures uh, that were created by Likrifa. Uh, the dragon god. Yeah, so that you encountered quite a few of these creatures in the, the Shadow, Shadow of the, of the gods. gods. But if you've not read it, you need to go and find out. Um, and now the next one is the Virgild. So this was actually historically a blood debt. So uh, until beyond the Saxons, this would be used to settle disputes. A bit like a home ganger, but a different form of law. This was recognised by officials as a type of law. A blood debt was if you kill someone's son, you owe them a debt. Um, it would not necessarily be going to prison or punishment, it may be in funds or them killing your son. It presents itself in an array of manners, but there we go, that is a Virgild, a blood debt. And there we go, that is a Virgild or a Virgild, I'm sorry, I'm not quite as up to scratch as Ed is with his terminology or the pronunciation. I think it, I think it might be Virgild, but okay. you know, if you think of Wolf or Wolf, um, then you say yeah. it with the W. Um, but, yeah. World Guild. but then when you say the next term, which is Vinegas, it's spelt with a W, but I think it's Vinegas. Uh, Vinegas here, I'm not sure if you can see. Uh, here we have leg, leg wrappings underneath our breeches or underneath William's baggy roost pants. Um, and these are basically very similar to World War I putties when you're in the trenches. Uh, they keep your trousers together, they keep your legs warm, they are a bit more of a, a you're, you're attacking the cold basically. Keeping your body warm and protected from the elements. And now the last term that we have on this glossary, and this is the Whale Road. So this has been a, a bit, it's a bit romanticised. This yeah. is the open sea, and this is a point that many warriors or travellers would look forward to, going on their ship into the open sea onto a new adventure, and they would be going on the Whale Road. Yeah, the Whale Road is a common kenning for what Old Norse would say for uh, the sea, the deep ocean. And a kenning is something in poetry, um, where they have, it's kind of like a metaphor really, yeah. isn't it, Would you, wouldn't you say? Such as if you've read Bernard Cornwell's, you know that he, uh, Uhtred has a blade called Serpent Tongue. Now that's very co common to have a kenning for your sword, for many other weapons as well. I'll have a list come up on the screen of different kennings for different pieces of weaponry. Thank you so much for watching our glossary of the Shadow of the Gods. Now, um, it's been so much fun. We always love dressing up and uh, this gives us something, another opportunity to talk about Dad's fantastic book. Now. Um, yeah, it's just amazing. There's so many old Norse things to go out there and read and so many references in the Shadow of the Gods that uh, we love reading it because um, it's just great fun, isn't it? It is awesome. But if you enjoyed this, please give us a like and a subscribe. There'll be lots more content with the Shadow of the Gods. Also other book series such as The First Law, lots of fantasy stuff, historical fiction like Bernard Cornwell, and we're doing a film review um, series soon of Tarantino films. So if any of that sounds like your cup of tea or your cup of mead, as it were, uh, then please give us a like, a subscribe, uh, and recommend us to any of your friends, or you may be a thrall. And for now, after the threats, uh, for now, uh, goodbye. Truth and courage, the Brothers Gwyn. Truth and courage, the Brothers Gwyn. Stay safe.